Well, it occurred to me that as long as I'm uh, at a standstill with that uh, part down there, we're going to have to look around for some scrap stock to make that. I could uh, move on with this side here. Uh, I uh, had cleaned up the, uh, the guard here and uh, dried it off well, and I picked up a new grommet. So if we go back to a little bit of ancient history, that's what the grommet looked like, That what was left of the grommet in there. And uh, so I picked up a new one. This is a grommet. This is more like a Wallace now. Oh, bloody well. I got the wrong size. <laughs> I measured the hole, and then I think I kept that measurement in my head, and when I went to the store, I must have, I must have been thinking... ID because that's looks like that's what I've got. I've got a grommet that the ID of this grommet is like what that hole is, I think. I don't know. I just tried stuffing it in there. It ain't gonna work. Darn. It's funny because I remember thinking, gee, you know, when I put this on this cord here, it actually uh, it's kind of uh, loose, you know. And I was gonna even just make kind of like a little bushing of a little piece of PVC tubing I had. Uh, right here but now in retrospect it makes perfect sense I've got the wrong size there we go now I have the right size grommet <laughs> I cut a little bit out of it uh, out of the cross section of it and uh, got it to fit shh don't tell anybody now as for routing the cable that's pretty self-explanatory there's a hole right here in the uh, spindle mount now, I was just going to feed it right in through the back here, but to make matters difficult, it's hollow underneath there. This isn't like a little tunnel that it's going to guide right through, so I'm going to have to come up with a different plan. Okay, ready for it? Wait for it. Ta-da! <laughs> oh! So close. Oh, it's just a little too. Oh, and I was so proud of myself. Oh, so I re-rigged it, and I almost had success, but the white wire popped out, and now it's folded back on itself and is not allowing this to come out. It's so close. It doesn't quite want to... Ah, there we go. It just fits. Oh, I did it without damaging the wire. How thrilling. To think you were here to see it. I just put a little bit of oil on that grommet to help uh, guide that uh, insulation through the outer sheath of the cable through there. I've already removed this bolt and reinstalled it because that's one of the things that holds this cover on. And the other thing is just this regular head screw that goes right here. Ah, now let me show you something real quick. Now, the temptation would be to just strip these wires, wrap them around these screws, and tighten the screw down on the wire and crush the conductor underneath it. You see that a lot. I think when I took this out, it kind of looked all hacked up like that. What the person who wired this switch didn't realize at the time was, you see these little holes right here? These little holes right here are actually for you to you loosen the screw, you stick the stripped wire into that hole, and then you tighten the screw, and it actually compresses down and makes a nice connection. And if you do it just right, you won't even have any bare wire showing at all. Oh, I uh, made an error on this. Some of these switches that have these holes in the back, the uh, screw actually still does the clamping action. In this particular style of switch, those little slots right there uh, next, to the, next to the hole, you actually put a very small blade screwdriver in there, and you actually pry and... That actually is what disengages the little clamping action in there. Insert the wire and then you pull the screwdriver out and it snaps closed on it. Works pretty well. This wire is a little bit of a light gauge because this is uh, number 14 stranded uh, wire. And uh, this switch is actually uh, for number 14 solid wire. But this should work fine. It's, it's not pulling out easily. So I've got my wires hooked up. This is a three-way switch. So there's an extra terminal here, and I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, it doesn't say on or off on it uh, because it's a three-way switch. So I could have checked the continuity with my ohmmeter, but all I'll do is 
I'll uh, figure out which way is on and then uh, I'll just rotate the switch when I mount it so that up is on. So the last thing I've got to do here on this uh, part of the wiring is I've got a ground wire here that uh, didn't exist in the original wiring. Well, I don't know if it existed in the original wiring or not, but in the wiring that was in here when I took it apart, there was no ground wire. Uh, as long as the ground wire is here and present, I might as well use this. And I'm going to use a, a three-pronged plug on the other end. And so I'm going to use the ground wire as a machine ground. So uh, I'm just going to get a little um, uh, eye terminal there, round terminal, uh, to crimp on there. And that way I can just put it underneath that screw. <laughs> I meant to say a ring terminal. I don't know why. Uh, so this is going to go here underneath the switch when I screw the switch down. Um, but I'm not doing that just yet because I haven't, again, I haven't decided yet which way it's going to face. Alright, so now I'm uh, back here to the back side of the lathe and this is where the cable comes out. And I can see that I don't want it flop it around anywhere near these gears here so I'm going to route it behind this bracket and I think I'll come down underneath here and go back towards the uh, back of the motor. Alright, so now here's where we run into a, uh, a different little problem which is where our wires are going to come together. Now, uh, if this was a larger motor, the style it just has a metal plate with two screws. Uh, you take the plate off and you can get both cables to go in there and you can make all of your connections inside there and end up with uh, this cable going inside here and then another cable coming out with the plug on it. My problem here is because of this cover. This cover, instead of just being the metal cover, it's this, uh, it's this Bakelite deal and it's got the, uh, the brushes behind it there. So, let's take this off real quick. For those of you who haven't seen the earlier videos where I uh, changed the direction on this motor and had it all apart. So this is what we got going on in here. So, my concern is if you look at how this cover is made. This cover is made so that it's designed basically to have just this one cord go in and that's it. So, I mean, if we were just coming out to here and then uh, going to a, a switch box and then coming out of the switch box with the cord, that'd be fine. So, I mean, I, mean, I guess I could, I could have done that. I could have run this right over to the switch and run another one out of the switch box. But the switch box only has that one hole with the grommet in it. So I can't really get a second cable out of there without drilling a hole in it. So I don't like that idea. I can't, you can see, there's no physical way for me to actually add a second hole here because I, I can't put a hole here. Uh, it's going to interfere with the brushes. I guess I could put one here on the top, or right here, but I'm not really crazy about that either. This has to go like this, then I'd have to have a, I'd have to have a wire coming out of the top and kind of making a turn. So I'm thinking what I want to do is I think I might want to make my junction outside of the box, which is also not ideal, but. It is what it is. Well, okay, I looked at the, uh, looked around the shop for uh, cords that I wanted to use on this. And of course, ideally what I'd like is I'd like a three-prong molded plug like that or with a round cable like this. But, I can't find one like that. The only one I could find with a round cable was in gray or white. Oh, so dirty. Nope, I decided I'm going to go with this flat cable and splice it to this one, work something out. So, first thing I want to do is I want to see where do I want this cable to end up. Uh, if I wanted this sheathing to go all the way in there, which I'm not sure about that yet. And I want to have 
some wire to work with. A uh, safe bet would be to cut it about here with the starters. Uh, let's see. These cutters are very poor. These are very poorly made. These are, these are the kind that come in the, uh, the only kind you get that come in a little uh, kit with a bunch of terminals. And you tend to always run out of one or two sizes of the terminals and you end up with that stupid little kit connectors you don't end up using. I should cut better than I thought it would. Alright, throw this back in the scrap box. Okay, so all I did was I stripped off the outer sheathing here and so I know this is going to come up like this. One of these wires from the switch is going to go to one of the terminals or one of the brushes other wire from the switch is going to have to come back out of here in order to splice into one side of the line. So I'm thinking, yeah, probably going to want to do this a different way. So I'll probably have this outside the box my splices in here shrink wrap this with heat, heat shrink tubing I think is the way I'll go give, you some, give this some thought all right so the first thing I did is I uh, took this hunk of uh, large it's the largest heat shrink tubing I've got and uh, Cut a piece of it, slid it over everything. Slid it down, but I didn't heat it yet and shrink it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my connections that I need to make here and use smaller heat shrink tubing to uh, insulate those. And then slide this whole tube back up over hopefully everything and shrink it. All right. Not sure if what I was saying before came on camera. Basically, what I did was I I cut off the largest heat shrink tubing I had a piece of. I cut a piece of that, slid it down over both cables, backed it off out of the way, and now I'm uh, getting ready to make my first splice. Um, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to just twist these together, put a wire in it because it'll be too bulky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back this way and twist it together a little bit and then uh, tin it with some solder. That'll make a good connection. And before I do that, I'm going to run a piece of this smaller diameter heat shrink tubing down as far down as I can out of the way. The trick is I don't want the heat from my soldering to react with it, so hopefully I can pull this off. There's nothing worse than going through all this trouble and having the solder prematurely shrink on you. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut this back even a little bit further. This may be... ah. Twisted like this. Like the beginning of a Western Union splice without all of the uh, hardiness. <laughs> Alright, so I'll solder that. Alrighty. You know, I think I own like uh, two of those. I can't find either one right now. I know one is in the truck. I'm using it for work. I to bring it back in. I try and at least keep one in the truck all the time.
trick is to keep the flame far enough away so you don't just vaporize and melt and turn the heat shrink into useless garbage. Good snug fit. That's good to know. Now I've got to repeat that process for the ground wires. Come on, you stinker. Son of a gun. That's what I was going to say. Son of a gun. See what I did there? That's why I should have gone out to the truck and got the heat gun. Oh. You believe that? After going through all that trouble. If I had more of this large heat shrink tubing, I would just stick a piece right over the end here and... But I do not. That was the last, that little short piece was the last I had the large stuff. Tell the guys. Okay, guys. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will be brighter. get a chance. It's really hard to find, but Trey Anastasio, the lead guitarist for Fish, does a kind of neat cover this song. You know, I know I'm real close and all, but I am going to quit here because it's been a long day. <laughs>